Greetings, unlimited beings. Unlimited biological, electrical, mental, physical, spiritual beings. I preface that for those that can relate to it, can tune into it. There are many that can't. There are many that are still stuck in the old model of living, you know? Sure, I once drank all the sodas, ate all the fleshes, punched people in the face. <laughs> I once did that and got punched in the face and thought it was cool to be a British champion. As you evolve, you realize that this being that you've been gifted with from the universe is like, this is an unlimited organism and that your ghost is living in. And if you invite the Holy Ghost and you invite the energy of like good energy, like Christ type energy, now you've got like a, a desire to be a good human being. You know what I mean? Like to be a good human being is actually a lot of effort. One of my clients said to me recently, he said, you know what, Marcus, life is negative and it's you who's got to bring the positive to it. And I was like, interesting analogy, you know? That's how he observed it. Life is negative and you've got to bring the positive. You know, it was a good way. I like to look at it like, you know what? Life is full of opportunity. Glass is, glass is always half full. That's the only way you're gonna survive. If you go around with glasses half empty mentality, you're shooting yourself in the foot right away, okay? So we're in this bathtub right here. This has rose, frankincense, helichrysum, lots of lavender, myrrh, and that's it, helichrysum. So you, you definitely wanna get into essential oils, guys. Okay, I'm 41.5. And it's really helping me to put this on and not age, you know? I got a couple of, I don't do all the Hollywood Botox, okay? This was fixed after a smashing in from, you know, fighting. So it looks a little, you know, prettier than normal. It might have been more like that, okay? But ultimately, um, nothing else on me. I mean, I had an Invisalign, but I don't really go for the whole Botox thing. I'm more into uh, trying to find ways to detoxify and cleanse and exist for a long time, you know? Or exist, if I'm gonna exist for a short time, exist the best I can. It's like this, if, if your grandfather gave you a new Tesla car right now, you'd be like, oh man, I'm gonna take good care of this Tesla car because, you know, granddaddy gave it to me and he passed away. But here's the thing, God gave you this, <laughs> gave you a machine that you can regenerate. I've seen people regenerate it from 300 pounds, 400 pounds down to like 200 pounds. So you can regenerate it, you can strengthen it, you can provide cleansing to it, you can upgrade it, you can look at your supercomputer that's in here that's flesh and look at the things that are negative and decide that's no longer serving me and breathe it out and just delete it and say, I like that application. Just like an iPhone updates its application or software is up updated to a computer, I like that. I'm gonna absorb that information and put it into my hard drive. You have this opportunity with this life to do that. You have this opportunity to close your eyes, listen to your heartbeat, and live in awe and wonder that there's an electromagnetic spark that's beating your heart. While you're busy speaking or breathing or doing other things, your heart is being beat by an electromagnetic spark of God. I mean, why not just say thank you to it? You know, thank you for beating. Because at one point, here's the truth, you know, through my meditative journeys, and especially if you experimented with certain herbs that are not tampered with by mankind, natural herbs that grow from the earth, you, you will come across the concepts that are matching up to all the concepts you're gonna find in quantum physics. From Sir Isaac Newton to Albert Einstein to the newest Greg Bradens and Dr. Neil Tysons and all these quantum physicists. And uh, Trey Smith, who's got some amazing videos you all need to check out you will realize that you are on a subcellular level, atoms, on a subatomic level, you are photons of light. You know, you're photons of light. You are the ideas of yourselves. Like whatever you believe wholeheartedly, you tend to put it into effect. 
If you believe you need to eat a certain toxic thing, you're going to eat it for 10 years. And 10 years later, you are going to be the manifestation of that belief because you put it into crystallization by eating it. If you eat pure plant-based, as I've done for like 16 years now, experimented with the full raw, and I've found that it's better for me to fast and do some raw and uh, certain foods uh, that are cooked like potatoes and yams have and, and beans have properties in them that you know are strengthening to the human body that can't really be as easily accessed through just sprouting with the same satiety if that makes sense so the satiety that you get and the enjoyment of living that you get out of a potato with some olive oil or some earth balanced butter on it which is not dairy butter if you put that together it's like mm. and then you are given a lot of satiety with the minerals and the the um flavor the vitamin c from that potato you know you can find organic potatoes and you can also uh definitely find you know organic yams so my point is science mixing with scripture you look at you want to look at as many scriptures as possible. You don't want to just look at only the Holy Bible because the Holy Bible was actually edited and put together from previous scriptures. So you need to go to those scriptures um, that were put together and have a look at where they were changed, where those scriptures were changed. Meaning, you know, the the King James Bible was put together by King James and his men and clergy. <laughs> Well, before that, the scriptures were, they were different. <laughs> so if you're really, you know, biblical, you want to look at pre-King James. And if you're scientific like me, I'm a theologist, philosopher, slash alchemist. You know, in my mind, I'm an artist. In my mind, I'm a free, unlimited being connected to God with the concept that what Ever Yahshua ben Elohim, Joseph did, the Christ being, whatever his name, whether it was Jesus or, or Jesus or Yahshua, that theme as a human being is the most beautiful, right? It's the most beautiful. It's like more beautiful than Superman. Because Superman punches people and Christ healed people. So, and, and for him to be able to resurrect himself, think about it, as a superhuman, that's amazing point is this use all the science available and be aware that you are also being duped by the mainstream you're being duped into a mainstream style of thinking and living that's slowly destroying you and sucking out your energy your life force your health so that you depend on certain products and if you depend on certain products you're no longer healthy and those products kind of just sustain you and therefore you will overwork yourself and not value yourself and begin to self-medicate with certain toxic products, you know what I mean, that are out there, easy access, certain toxic ones. So Try to remember you are an unlimited being at all times as you wake up. Try to remember that. Because that's really what's going to set you apart when you're getting ready to be caught up with something that the Matrix is throwing at you. And you might say, well, what is the Matrix for real? Well, the Matrix is, is a scheme of control and power. <sighs> Have you noticed something about the people in power, how they look the most unhealthy, how they also speak with the most hate and control and greed and ego. Have you noticed that? Okay, well, that's because that's where that train goes. It's a psychological pathway. And they probably would hate this because what I'm reminding everyone to be is humble. What, what I've had to learn to do and be is hum, humi humble myself. Like humble myself that even though I seem to know more than many and I have traveled a lot and I've been privileged and blessed, that I really, I know nothing, <laughs> you know? Like, you don't know anything, and Albert Einstein and Sir Isaac Newton said they didn't know anything. So anyone who really goes around believing that they know everything is kind of in the greatest, excuse me, 
delusion ever. That's the greatest delusion ever. Like, the truth be told, when you meditate and you are really, really quiet, you suddenly will find that you are seeing what the quantum physicists say you are. Light, sound, and frequency. You are a collection of light, sound, and frequency. Like, your sounds range from like, so you go, it goes up way higher than that and way lower than I could do. But my point is that was just an idea of the spectrum of sound that you have living within you. Certain sounds are healing and certain ones are destructive. Same thing with colors. You are the different colors of your aura, you know, red, green, yellow, white light. When you're dark and angry, you're dark, you know. You, you, you contain the full spectrum of what it is to be a universal being, what it is to be a child of this universe, a child of God, a child of both science and scripture, a child of this infinite, amazing reality that we all are experiencing before we're dead, looking up in the sky like this. Infinitely dead. But when this body no longer is here, the light that's powering your cerebellum and beating your heart, well, that's energy. So that energy goes back to join this cosmic soup. You know, where do you go when you dream? You shut down, the energy is still alive and you, you exist in some other dimension during your body shutdown. Yeah, you're breathing, but you exist. Now, maybe when you no longer are in the body, you go and exist and become totality. You know, or if you have made yourself such a dark vibrational soul on this planet by becoming so greedy and corrupt and lying and looking at everything from a monetary power standpoint and ego, then when it's time to pass, all the evil that you did is a vibration, right? It's a vibration. It's like there are different people that can vibe with you. Some people are really kind and polite and loving, and some people are really low. So the kind of polite vibration up here, and you're like, oh, I like that person. They're cool. They're nice. They, they're full of love and kindness and politeness, and they care about animals and human beings. And some people are down here spewing hate and could care less about the animals and are all about, I'm better than you. And, and um, they're all into their own vibration of power, control, and greed, and violence, and war, and everything. And Now, these people are in a different vibrational frequency to these people, hence... Birds of a feather flock together, you know, power, war, murderous, you know, careless, insensitive tend to flock in this area. And then loving beings, and it's, it goes up like a piano. Loving beings are up here, and eventually the really high beings are vibrating, you know. And it, it sounds ridiculous if you don't look at it from a scientific point of view. Look, really go and study science before you poo-poo this theory, because at the end of the day, it's just a presented theory to you, you know. My job here is to attempt to help those that can grasp and absorb the data, i.e. I'm just dropping wisdom little by little to assist as the world falls apart. So if you don't want to fall apart, you need to get to places where when the droughts and the tsunamis and the floods and the earthquakes and the nuclear bomb deal and the wars and all that goes off, as has been predicted and as is showing both to become true through scripture and through observation of science and national geographical disasters or credible news. If you can get a hold of credible news, you can see that we are heading into times where life can be tough. People have their houses flooded and lose everything. People lose their lives with sickness or insensitive malpractice, you know? So I'm simply trying to help you understand that you can help yourself to exist longer and stronger through using tools like, you know, copper helps to prevent your body from deteriorating. I just recently found out because I'm 41.5 and I noticed a few gray whiskers right here. I was like, okay, I want to see if that's remedy uh, a bull. And I researched it and found out that copper is the one mineral that prevents um, your hair from turning gray and can return it back from gray for, to black or brown.
in my case, is some red from my father, as Ethan has red hair. Or it also prevents wrinkles, so it's great for ladies. Well, I have a few crow's feet, you know what I'm saying? A few here from... I'm not interested in all the Botox, all the toxic stuff that injects into your head. Never done that, don't want that. I'd much rather lather my face with coconut oil because it's antibacterial, antifungal, edible, and it can sink into my pores and my body can technically take that in its bloodstream and be okay. So, you know, you got to look at what's healthy for you and not necessarily what's on the market that's booming. Because what's on the market that's being advertised to you, there's a reason why there's a big commercial for it. Because they're trying to make a lot of profit. So you got copper, you got bathtubs filled with Epsom salt and all the essential oils. These things help regenerate you guys. You know, fasting. I do what's called intermittent fasting or cyclic fasting or, you know, I was observing Dr. Nanemen Ra for a while and I still think he's a wonderful, great person despite the fact that he says he prays to darkness, which each to their own, man. You know what I mean? God bless them. <laughs> I mean, I, you, I, one thing I feel which is important, which is lacking in, in the violent type religions, because I'm not religious. Okay, let me just put that out there. I am spiritual. I am spiritual to grasp a hold of science and scripture. Practical. I just happen to love the concept of Christ. Because why? The Christ is the being that showed the most love. Whether he was fictional, like Superman, or whether he was real, like a legend, like Michael Jordan. <laughs> it's the most loving character ever put out there by humankind. You know, the other characters like Moses, Muhammad, and a few others had had done some things like murdered people and they were forgiven, so to speak, but, uh, you know, they were different stories to the Christ character. So I always like, hmm, the Christ character seems to stand out, you know what I mean? As the healthiest one. Like, the Buddha sounds great, but the Buddha looks large, like he's not very healthy, like he's sitting under a tree eating all day. And he may be the most beautiful soul, but he didn't pay attention to his biological machine, hence potentially sickness or disease could have came about because that's unfortunately what happens when you let go of the physical and only focus on the mental and the spiritual then the body becomes filled up with bacterial organisms and disease and sickness and degenerates so it's also good if you're mental and spiritual to also be physical it's good to have all of the dynamic it's like god gave you your nose and eyes and a mouth and fingers. If you take away one of those sensory systems, you are limiting yourself. So if I couldn't smell, now I can't smell the beautiful oil in the bath. If I stopped seeing and I stopped looking at things from a point of view where people say, oh, you're being vain, Marcus, because you're always flexing muscles. I only flex muscles as a reference to, am I on track at 41.5 to my goals, which are to help myself be a superhuman and help others be superhuman. So by flexing, I'm like, okay, technically, that looks on track enough for me. It's not a steroid arm. It's not massive. But it's on track for me at 41.5. <laughs> right? And I'm a scientist like that. So theologist, theologists study scriptures. You know, they study Catholic scriptures, ancient scriptures, Dead Sea Scrolls. They study Bibles, translations, different versions. That's what theologists do. I like to be that. I like to be a philosopher. Socrates, Averroes, Edison. Um, well, is Edison's not so much. Uh, sorry, he, he's in a different category. Um, I was thinking of... Um, what was I thinking of? Never mind. You have a brain fart sometimes. My point is this. By allowing yourself to be unlimited, it allows you to look at multiple categories of what it is to be alive, right? Of what it is to put together a beautiful soup, which is required. Because if you don't have a beautiful soup in your life, you can get depressed. If you're too linear, right, you can get depressed. Like, not just depressed, but like, what's the point of living if you never eat any chocolate? Or if you don't like chocolate? you never taste something sweet. Or if you 
have this adversity towards sexuality, like, oh, it's disgusting, sex and perverted, and mm, then you never experienced sexual heaven, you know? God gave you all these gifts and pleasures and joys to experience, you know what I mean? Like, when I say God, I don't mean a man or the Christian version or the Catholic version or the Jewish version. I mean the infinite force of electromagnetic energy governing the entire universe, spinning the planets, spinning the moon around us, spinning us at 3,000 miles per hour as we also rotate around the sun every year and the sun spins around the center of the galaxy. I mean, can you possibly fathom Elohim? No, you really can't. But you can try to fathom yourself. And in attempting to fathom yourself, you gain access to your own greatness. You know, forget criticizing other people. Try to find a way to help them. Pray for, the best thing you can ever do is pray for anyone for a miracle. Like nowadays, if someone's rude to me, I'm just like, I mean, as long as they're not striking me, because I work in a very wild environment, okay? And there's a reason I work in the wild environment I do. One, God wants me there. Evidently, I do very well in there. And, and B, it's because I feel like when I have worked for corporations, when I have worked for conventional places, there is a lacking of freedom, there is a conformity, there is a prejudice, there is a behavior. But when I'm working, dancing in a gay club, no one is discriminated against whether you're straight, gay, bisexual, whether you're uh, transsexual, whether they're fat, tall, young, old. You see 90 year olds or at least an 84 year olds in there sometimes. Amazing. And then you see youngsters that are 18. You see skinny ones and big ones. But you know, ultimately every human being is a child of God. It don't matter their sexuality, you know? Every human being shouldn't necessarily be limited by black, white, old, young, straight, gay, gender this, sexuality this, gay, bi, who cares? You know, you gotta like sweep those labels aside. <laughs> those labels are limiting labels. Unlimited biological organism with an electromagnetic cerebellum in the back of your head taking orders from your brain that might take orders from darkness if you're meditating into darkness, light if you ask the light of this entire universe that's governing the stars and the sun to guide you because you are nothing but a neuron, like a grain of sand. That's how relevant we all are, grains of sand in an infinite beach. So when you take that kind of light and say, hey, I've been gifted with life, man. I'm gonna take this life. I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm gonna explore it. I'm gonna do everything I can to be good to my neighbor, to my family, to my wife, to my kids. I even take care and pay my ex-wife's rent and make sure she's okay. I get a lot of heat for that, but I do it because it's supposed to be done, you know? Until God relinquishes that responsibility and she has her own husband or her own direction or her own boyfriend or, or somebody who fills the void, I help. And it's not that I help out of any other thing that I know I'm an infinite being and my job is to help people. Now I can't help people at the expense of my family. I can't help people that are toxic and attacking me. I gotta be smart, man. But I will help as many people as I possibly can. So I do my work. I believe that if Christ were around today, he would probably be in the gay club. I mean, he walked with the lepers. He walked with the sick. He went with the tax man. He, he helped the prostitute who was about to get stoned. Why wouldn't he help the very people that y'all are all throwing stones at? You know what I'm saying? I mean, let's face it. Christ disrobed and washed his disciples' feet. If you saw a man in the middle of a courtyard disrobe and start washing 12 men's feet, in today's society, most of you would start heckling him and calling him names, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you gotta look at the concept that love is this answer that we need. Like math, Galileo said that math is God's code for the universe, or God's language that he wrote the universe. So math is everywhere, you know? The equation of math, how long have you been cleansing? How long, how much food have you got? How many minerals do you have in your system? How strong are you? How healthy are you? How hydrated are you? 
How many bacteria do you have in you? How many healthy flora? How many healthy enzymes? What's your blood like? These are all math. But without love, it all means nothing. You know? It means nothing, man. I know. I've been with billionaires. I've sat across from billionaires, and they're miserable, man. Some of these people are billionaires and miserable, trapped in an illusion. Like, oh, I've got pressure. i got to do this. i got to do that. I can't be seen doing that. I can't be seen. I'm like, really? You're a billionaire, and you're trapped in that? Wow. Like, I don't want to be trapped in that. I'd rather be free. I'd rather not have as much money than that. I mean, it's kind of like being a billionaire is like being obese. You know, no disrespect to an obese person who's out there listening because I have helped many obese people become healthy. So you're not being downgraded here. It's just those who recognize that they are obese and want to do something about it get healthy. So if you're a billionaire with funds that could help this globe and you're hoarding it, then you're just the same as an obese human being really because you've got too much money therefore your ego has inflated as a result of it you have no drive or the drive that you have is based upon power and therefore you're not doing what you should be doing like someone who just sits on the couch eating all day till their belly is huge and never works out how is that healthy it's not and it's not healthy if somebody is full of fake digits in an account and those digits spread more evenly could help a lot of other humans that are struggling or dying or in disease or in sickness or set up programs that literally help them you know what i mean help a lot of people um what's going on out there yet what were you doing mommy are you coming in no oh. Oh, yes. yeah i'm just doing a video so i don't know where, where are you coming in for? No? are you going to do laundry Okay, take it. An unlimited being just flows, you see what I'm saying? Take it. I guess I just need another towel, because that one's a bit wet. Anyway, I guess i got to sign out, because my mind is now in the laundry. But, once again, let go of negative labels, research, and upgrade yourselves to the best of your ability. Do your best at defragging your mental computer, cleansing your being, and realizing that you potentially can live a lot longer and a lot stronger than you have been told you can live. You can also rehabilitate yourself. I've rehabilitated injuries in my body simply by whacking it with a bamboo stick or with actually just a wooden stick, you know? You are capable, if you have an injury here, of just hitting it until it's kind of getting blood flow and I'll try and just give you a demonstration this might create a little bit of redness there that redness brings the blood the oxygen and breaks down uh, fibers that are you know crossed over from scar tissue flattening them it's being compared to ultrasound you get the nutrients back into it you stretch it you rub it out you might create a little bruise but then a day or so later the bruise is gone and you're like oh increased mobility you can regenerate yourselves guys the essential oils are regenerating you know the um the food fasting just learning how to intermittent fast is a great way to start you know i would never suggest praying to anything other than christ light okay because if you pray into this universe you've got many different frequencies and consciousnesses and different energies and I know this as an actor okay if you begin to pathway yourself down a certain negative pathway you before you know it are thinking negative and it's like a habit right it's like have you ever gotten into a negative habit I have and when you're in that negative habit you're like this has to stop but the only way it has to stop is by pulling in more light or a higher frequency pulling in a new habit that's better so it's like upgrading your habits you know the more you can upgrade your habits like the gym habit the the juice habit the fasting habit the essential oil habit the bathing habit the uh the cleaning habit the using uh coconut oil in your mouth for five minutes habit charcoal habit activated charcoal if you want to make the teeth white rub the teeth with activated charcoal you know um there are so many tools out there guys to like really regenerate you copper is a huge one Colloidal silver helps your immune system, you know. Um, 
But the number one thing you've got to realize is that you are all grains of sand. And with that grain of sand, you're all completely relevant. If that makes sense, you're completely relevant and completely irrelevant. You have the power to brighten others days or destroy other people's days with negativity. But if you go around destroying other people's days, you become a mathematical equation down here. And eventually what happens is you get canceled out by another person in that vibration. Because it's kind of like lions and tigers or alligators, right? In nature, those things will cancel out other innocent beings that they can. But then at some point, the bigger one comes along and eats them. Whereas the frequent, the beings that stay more savvy and peaceful, you may find living longer like turtles or dolphins or birds or, you know, different creatures that live wild and free and peaceful, whether it be horses or, you know what I mean? They got more of a high loving vibration or frequency. And they have to obviously watch out for carnivores, but it's like me. I'm like a horse. I live and have lived on vegetation for 16 years. Now, if someone were to attack my family, I would probably become like a bull because naturally I have to protect my family at that moment. But if I could talk to the person like, yo, I don't want to become a bull. I'm really a chilling horse. What you're doing isn't righteous right now, but you can get it on track and save yourself aggravation, you know, injury, police report, all that stuff. Because we really don't want to fight, you know? Who wants to fight? Who wants to smash a supercomputer? Who wants to smash this android that you've been given from God? Who wants to smash another person? No one really, unless you're partly insane or you really want fame, glory, and money. I get it. I was once interested in it. And then I got to taste and see what it really was about. And I'm like, this ain't where it's at, man. Where it's at is sensitivity and respecting the organism and respecting each other, and respecting the animals, respecting mother nature, respecting oneself, simplicity, and wisdom and science and scripture, and studying and reading and researching and becoming free and becoming loving. And hopefully this message reached some of you and helped some of you. Plenty of people out there hating. Nowadays, to me, a hate and comment, or hate, it's just a waste of my time. <laughs> I just look at it like, all right, that's in your head. See, hate lives in your nervous system. And if you're hating other people, the only person who's getting hurt is your nervous system. Just love people, man. Pray for them for a miracle. Like just, just even if you know the miracle ain't coming, it's still good for you because your nervous system is like, you know what? That person's really toxic individual. <sighs> I pray they get a miracle. And let me leave it alone and get out there. By you praying they get a miracle, your nervous system just kind of was in a is in a, is in a good space. You're not wishing them bad, thinking them bad, being bad. Your nervous system is in a good space. And that's the key, getting your nervous system in a good space, like lavender is in here. Lavender is really good for the nervous system. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, I've said my piece. God bless you all. Unlimited, biological, electrical, mental, physical beings with the potential of existing far beyond your current understanding. Or mine.